Hello and welcome to Jamhammer. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a simple and quick to paint scheme for getting your delight gangs ready for scumming it up in the underhive. You can find time codes for each stage of this paint scheme in the description below, as well as links to help support the channel, including affiliates and a subscription one too. Almost 98% of people who watch Jamhammer content aren't subscribers, so please do click on this link if you enjoy this video or the channel as it really helps and costs you nothing too. I recently started to get into Necromunda after getting my hands on this Hive War box here which included terrain, books, accessories and two gangs to get new players into the game, the Escher Gang and these bald-headed, vision-enhanced ghosts, the Delight Gang. As soon as I saw these chaps, I was immediately struck by how reminiscent they were of the cybernetically modified agents from a vintage Amiga game called Syndicate that came out at around the same time as the original Necromunda tabletop rules. The games share some similarities, such as both being set in some far-flung dystopia, though Syndicate features one of corporations using their agents to assassinate and brainwash their way to global dominance, whereas Necromunda gangs are fighting for the survival and supremacy of their faction in the Hive City. Either way you look at it, in the 90s we feared that the human consciousness would become irreparably fused with ever-increasing technological advancement and that rampant consumerism would lead to systemic corruption so calamitous as to bring about the very destruction of our planet. But we would all be wearing sick trench coats. So, in glory of all things cyberpunk, I wanted to base my colour scheme for our delight gang here on this box cover art from that original Syndicate game. I've assembled these five fighters from the start set and armed them with a variety of auto guns, pochette pistols, shotguns and a couple of web gauntlets for good measure. I've already coated them with an even layer of black primer, so now let's get to painting. The colour of those trench coats on the box art is predominantly grey. Now we could just base coat the model with a suitable grey paint, but I want to start creating a nice texture as well as some shading and highlights from the start. To do this we're going to grab a dark grey paint, I've opted for Mechanica's standard grey, and I'm going to work some of this into the bristles of a medium dry brush like this, and then wipe away some of the paint on a piece of kitchen paper. We want a little more paint on our brush than with the standard dry brush though, as this is still going to be our base layer. Something like this. Then all we're going to do is take our Delac and apply our grey paint in small concentric circles. We want this to go on quite thick as you can see here, but still leave some of that black primer in the very deepest recesses and folds of the clothing. Not all of these areas we hit are going to be grey in the end like guns and faces, but in the name of speed we'll just throw this on now and we can always paint over these other areas later on in the scheme. Now let's add some highlights. Get a light grey paint or just mix a touch of white to your dark grey. I'm switching over to Vallejo Stonewall grey because it's what I have. And then work some into your brush again. This time we only want a small amount of paint in the bristles, so the usual amount you'd use when applying a dry brush. And now we want to apply this predominantly from above to try and create the effect that this is where light is hitting the miniature. So just giving the mini a light brush from top to bottom, but then really getting in there on the peaks of any creases in the cloth to apply a decent highlight to these parts. This should create a nice transition by leaving some darker shading in the recesses and slowly developing to lighter parts along the most prominent edges of the cloth. All this dry brushing may look a little chalky for now, but not to worry, we'll resolve that later. Next though, get yourself a flesh tone and apply it to the exposed hands and faces of your fighters. Although our model on the box art has quite a bronze tone, that doesn't seem in keeping with the Delac who operate in the darkest depths of Necromunda. To that end, I'm using a mix of three different paints here to create different pale tones which should help to make my gangers feel a little more unique on the table. Got Rakarth Flesh for our Master of Shadows leader here. 
a Vallejo off-white bone colour for this specialist ghost. And then Korax White is actually my favourite. I kind of applied this on a whim to the Shadow Juve with two auto pistols and think it really conveys this creepy, almost android-like skin tone for these subterranean operators, more akin to Data or Bishop from other sci-fi franchises. Reviewing our picture again, and the grey of the trench coat and the night sky have a really blue-purple hue to them. I'm happy with the trench coat in grey, so to bring these colours in, I'm instead going to apply some McCrag blue to the weapons casings. This adds a welcome hit of colour, but is not so bold as to stand out too much against the other monochrome tones we've used so far. To incorporate the purple, I'm going to use this Vallejo Royal to pick out a few details on the minis, like lenses and gems, such as these containers attached to each of our Delac belts. On to metallics next, and I'm going to use Lead Belcher to pick out all of the gunmetal parts of our minis, like the ventilation kit tubes, the tubes on the web gauntlets, and you can see the purple used there too. I'm going to apply Lead Belcher to the other parts of the weapons as well, including any grenades you may have attached to your fighters. I'm only going to very lightly apply a bit of Lead Belcher to the weapon parts though, as I want to convey the idea that they've been dulled by our gang to stop the light from reflecting off them in the darkest corners of the underhive. Just a few lines along the most raised edges should be enough to carry across that they are metal. Finally, we can apply a much more liberal coat of our gunmetal to the unique Necromunda bases. Checking the picture again, and our Syndicate agent is very cold in tone. But there's this burst of colour in the bottom left corner, with some coppery tones reflecting the fiery blast above. So, to capture that, we need to add some warmth. I'm going to switch over to a gold paint now, and I'm opting for Retributor Armour to really offset these very cold blues, blacks and greys. A lot of the decoration and metal work on the Dalak will need a layer of this, so this is going on the mouthpiece of the ventilators, the clasps on their trench coats, their belt buckles, any metal on their heads like earpieces or eye lenses, the skulls along their sleeves, and also the elbow pads underneath. Just going to switch over to a bad and black now to block out the chambers hanging from their belts as I don't want them to look as though they're made out of the same cloth material as the coats. We can also use this colour to cover over any aerials that are protruding from their earpieces and to tidy up around the edges of our bases where we may have slipped over with the lead belcher. While we're tidying up, we can check over our mini now and cover up any other slip ups. I used some more McCrag Blue here, for example, on the gun cases on this Mini, where I went over with the Lead Belcher. And then, notice I'd forgotten about the Master of Shadows cane, so painted the skull with that bone white, and the snake with a Vallejo dark green for the body, and a blood red for the mouth. Now that everything's been tied up, we can apply an all over coat of black wash, such as Null Oil, which will create some nice dark shading as well as to help bring down the chalkiness of that heavy dry brush and should make for a smoother transition between the highlights. Once this is touched dry, after about half an hour or so, I'm going to switch over to a brown wash like Agrat's Earthshade and just apply this with a gentle stippling motion like this to the bases to help create a nice tarnish effect to suggest the dirty floor of the Zone Mortalis. Leave the maze again, and once the shades have completely dried, we can move on to bringing in another bit of warmth. I wanted to bring in some element of that bright explosion to our mini here, so opted for Avalanche Sunset, as it has really excellent coverage for a yellowish paint. All we're going to do is thin this down on our palette as usual, get a little on the brush, and then using the edge of the brush, just carefully try to catch the edge of the trench coats. So we can follow this along the fold here between the clasps, then up to this double layer at the neck here where it folds over, and then around the back of the neck and the bottom of the rope too. We can also use this colour to catch the outline of any extra cloth pieces 
such as the holster on our Ghost Specialist with a Grav Pistol here. Final step now, and we're just going to apply a few highlights to re-establish a bit of the brightness that was dulled down during the wash stage. Using Vallejo Silver here, and just going to apply a dot or two of this to the very edge of weapons, and to catch a few of the most raised parts of the golden decorations, like this belt buckle. We can also use this silver to match the eyes from that picture, which have this really off-putting metallic sheen, as though we're looking into the blank, pitiless stare of some synthetic human. And then, going back over with our skin tones, really thin down this time, and catching those raised areas like the cheeks, nose, and the chin, just to bring those out from the shade too. And there we have it! A really quick and simple scheme that has our Delac ready to begin their clandestine work in the Underhive. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. Although I was sort of making this up as I went along, I'm pretty happy with the results. That initial dry brush has brought a lot of texture to make the trench coats look like they're made of some sort of synthetic fibre that blends nicely into the walls of the Zomortalis, while that yellow edge really offsets it and brings some much needed vibrancy. I wasn't really a huge fan of the Rakoth or bone colour flesh in the end, but would definitely recommend the Korax white used even though it was a total gamble. It just looks like such an eerie, expressionless mask, especially when paired with those lifeless silver eyes. There'll be more Necromunda videos being released in the near future, so please do keep an eye out for new content coming soon to Jamhammer. In the meantime, there are plenty of other videos available on the channel, including a few that are on screen now for you to click on. Thanks again for watching.